All right, so uh, this is Christian. Today I'm here with Tony, who landed the dev job last week. And we worked together for five months or so. And I wanted to share with you his experience going through the program, what he learned, what, um, what he was struggling with before, and then what he's looking for in the future. So I guess, congratulations, Tony. How are you doing? Hi, thank you. I'm really good. Finishing my first week. <laughs> yeah, I actually want to say something. You are not a React developer, even though I've been teaching you React, right? Right, right. I landed a job where I'm going to use Vue mainly. And uh, you just started this week. How do you find working with Vue so far compared with React? Well, the thing is, at the beginning, we're, I'm not really doing much coding. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I've been fixing some bugs, but I'm also like with the onboarding and configuring and solving like configuration issues sure. more than just developing coding. <laughs> sure, that's always a pain. I always, uh, yeah. I always yeah, yeah. Uh, so hate on- So I'm gonna give you like a full comparison between the two. Maybe, yeah. we, maybe we should do like a six month follow up or something like that. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what were you, so we started working together in April or May, I don't remember, April? End of April? I think it was beginning of April. Beginning of yeah. April. April, May, June, July, August. Five months. What were you doing before that? What was your approach to learning code? Because you weren't a complete beginner, right? I wasn't a complete beginner. I Actually, I have a PhD in data analysis sure. in a, the field of bioinformatics, mm -hmm. molecular biology. Mm -hmm. So I was using Python every day to just analyze my data. Mm -hmm. I was in a complete beginner in programming. I was a beginner in web development. Sure. And what were you since doing? I wanted to, yeah, go. So since I wanted to like get more knowledge from that, I I signed up for like online schools mm -hmm. where you would pay, I don't know, like twenty dollars, twenty euro a month. Mm -hmm. And you would get like I, I signed up for a program that in a single you, UI. You cut you cut off when you said you signed up for a program. So I signed up for one of those online schools yep. for a full stack development development program. Mm -hmm. And I would just, it was the usual, like you would get an explanation, some task, and then you would see the result. And that was basically what I was doing. And uh, what do you think, um, what was your bottleneck when you came to me? Uh, I felt I actually lost motivation very quickly. <laughs> I felt that I wasn't learning like enough, fast enough, you know, mm -hmm. like either in quantity and quality and time wise. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that, man, this is going to take me a long time if I continue down this road. Sure. Uh, and I also didn't know what I could do to learn more, to learn fast, like to have a quality, quality learning. Let's say. Sure. And if you would estimate, based on what we did together, right, for the past five months, if you would have done it by yourself, how long do you think it would have taken you this whole process? I don't know, maybe a whole year, even more. Because uh, uh, on my own, I wouldn't have someone to get, give me feedback on my code. Mm -hmm. So maybe realizing what was wrong with my code. Why do, you, why do you think that's important? Because I'm always talking about this, right? And people might say, oh... <laughs> This guy is BSing us, but what do you think? Do you think it makes well, a only, difference? I, I can only give you like my opinion sure. and how I feel about it. Sure. Maybe of there's a better answer for it, but basically just to know that I'm on the right path, because like I have like an inner saboteur that is gonna tell me this is not right. This is what are you doing? Mm -hmm. How do you know this is correct? Mm -hmm. And if you have someone telling you, okay, you, this is good, you can improve this, this, this. Mm -hmm. But then if someone tells you, this is good, uh, go continue, do this next. Mm -hmm. It's easier than just having this little voice telling you that is, uh, that is not correct, or maybe it is, but you don't know. Mm -hmm. And it kind of stops you from moving on and to keep motivate, motivated. You know? Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it's like, like no one can give you feedback on this. It's not like... Um... It's not like a, f like a meal, right? Where people can tell you, yeah, it's good or not, you know? They can't taste it or they cannot see it. Yeah. It's not something... Yeah. Uh, my mom couldn't tell me, you know, if, it's, if my websites were good or bad, you know. She, she can just say, yeah, yeah exactly. good, keep going. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. So yeah. besides, besides like the code reviews, what else uh, did you find uh, like useful? 
like actually the challenges and the little apps that we developed together because uh, okay like online schools they have some tasks and projects you can work on but i felt that both the explanations like the explanations that you gave in the videos we could apply them directly on the onto the challenges we had mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and uh, like the the examples that we made like they really helped me learn how you de develop a, a front end ui Mm -hmm. Especially when you were getting stuck and uh, we were trying to debug those things and then uh, I was yeah, pulling my exactly. hair out, you know. Uh, yeah. you, you are one of the first who've, who've tried the crypto app and probably I'm going to put like a video here so people can see what you did. Mm. Uh, what did you think about that app? Because it's um, pretty simple, right? There are three pages, right? But yeah. what did you learn yeah, while, yeah. while developing that app? I think you worked on it since June, right? June? Yeah, mid June. So yeah, yeah. three months. You've been working three months on an app. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what did you learn so, while building that thing? Um, mostly, like how to handle the API requests mm -hmm. from different endpoints, then putting them together in a single page for a single component. Uh, that was a, like the biggest thing. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I said like the combining different API calls from different endpoints mm -hmm. to get the data and show it in a single page. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a, like the big thing. Mm -hmm. But also I felt that I spent a long time uh, designing like different uh, like web responsiveness of the pages, mm -hmm. which seems simple, but me personally, <laughs> I had to invest a lot, a lot of time in it mm -hmm. like to make it as I want it to be like as fluid as I wanted it to be. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. So both how to handle the data and also how to make things look good. <laughs> yeah, the your mobile version of the app looks really good. I was like, wow, this is actually really good, you know, because uh, before that I was only seeing the designs and this is actually something yeah. uh, important that I have realized don't let the students figure out the designs and the functionality just tell them what to do and they will do it you know and i cut off like two months of the learning curve by doing that which was pretty pretty good absolutely i think without without the design to follow i would have that would have taken me a long time a longer time yeah and also looks good when you show it to someone right they are like wow this looks like a real <laughs> product you know what exactly why you didn't go for a bootcamp because with me it took five months right but you could have gone to a bootcamp which is three months and you learn to become a full stack developer right obviously yeah. that's way way better in theory but kind of what was your approach because you you had options right either a bootcamp or going with me kind of what made you choose yeah. going this route i guess with a bootcamp what happens is that you follow like a, a schedule that mm -hmm. is the same for everyone. Yep. And something that I really value is taking things at my own pace. Um, I know that is not like how things work in the real world, but after like after my PhD, <laughs> so I after my PhD, I finished it during the worst of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So that was like. I had PTSD after that. Sure. <laughs> and uh, I didn't want to, like, I don't know how stressful a bootcamp is, but I didn't want to invest the money, the time, and, uh, you know, the, the emotional investment also in something that I wasn't certain was going to help me mm -hmm. in three months. Mm -hmm. uh, so I decided to go for this and just take, it, take the, the time I needed to really learn and to be really like interview ready whenever I felt it and whenever the mentor said I, I was. And yeah. I feel, I don't, I really don't know. I don't know how boot camps work, but personally, I don't know if that would have been the case after three months. Sure. Learning the same as a bunch of different people also. Yeah, this is something I actually, because in the beginning I was doing the same thing, like we have a strict period of time, but then I realized actually everyone is totally different. And even though you're a super smart guy, you take your amount of time, you know. Some other guy is yeah. gonna take two months, some other guy is gonna take one year and you have to give them that breathing space so they are not in that desperation mode where they have to push, you know, where they have to hustle, you know. I mean, 
you hustled a lot, but you did not hustle like I'm chasing you with a stick down the road if you don't. Exactly. You know, so that yeah, gave I, you some. I, feel, I felt that was a really good thing for me. I really didn't want to have another traumatic experience <laughs> while learning web development, you know, and yeah, that's something that I really valued. Sure. Remember when we talked about in your consultation call? Uh, what did you want? I wanted to become a developer because I wanted to have remote jobs that paid well mm -hmm. and that could that, that would allow me to be close to my friends and my partner mm -hmm. wherever in the world. I didn't want to be attached anywhere in the world, you know. And where did you want and to live? In Spain. Sure. Like good weather, good uh -huh. quality of life. And I remember that. <laughs> And, uh, but this, I, in my mind was like in three years after I got some experience, you know, sure. uh, working as a junior and then become a freelance or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and be able to work remotely. But turns out that I landed a job that is exactly what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So now Tony is back. We fixed the internet issues. Um, in your, in our consultation call, right? Um, you wanted a few key things from uh, as a result of working with me, right? So what? Yes. What were what were those? So I wanted to like access an industry that would allow me to work remotely. Sure. Uh, to have a good salary. Sure. And uh, because I wanted to be like close to my friends and my partner, mm -hmm. I wanted to live in Spain, mm -hmm. <laughs> basically. Sure. Uh, and uh, basically with my degree, the, the opportunities were somewhat limited mm -hmm. to, have, to just a couple of cities. Mm -hmm. And I, wanted, I didn't want to have that, like to choose only in those two cities. You know? I mm -hmm. wanted to have more options. Sure. And five months later? <laughs> and five months later, it turns out that actually in that call, I was like projecting myself for a in a few years, you know, I sure. will, after getting some experience in, in an office job or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, like not like in presence, um, I would become remote. Mm -hmm. But then now I landed a job that is 100% remote. So I don't have, I can stay in Spain where I am uh, with my partner mm -hmm. and uh, it pays well. So that's not a limiting factor either. You are in Spain, job is in France. In yeah. Okay, and uh, you don't need to give the number because I'm not about the numbers, but percentage-wise, compared to, let's say, what a junior developer makes in Spain, do you know what's the percentage? I've calculated it. Uh, but I don't know the percentage, but maybe it's like... 50% more. 50% 50, 50 more? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know why I know? Because I was making that money in my second year. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so yeah, I feel, I feel super lucky. Because it's a job, it's something in a country that pays a lot more than sure. what they pay here. Sure. I used to say that uh, I'm not sure if that's possible. I think I've made like a five minute video about that a while ago. But now I've <laughs> destroyed that limiting belief. And um, what's great about what's happening right now in our small little group of, I guess, developers and aspiring developers, because there are a few savages like you in there, is that right now, you guys are going to get hit up by, by recruiters, right? And then you can forward uh, to the rest of the group job offers and contacts and stuff like that. And the network yeah. is going to grow bigger and bigger. Um, exactly. And uh, it's going to be easier and easier for everyone. Because basically, if you are recommending someone, that person is going to be 50% vouched, you know. Also, yeah. if there is an opportunity in your country or maybe... Anton is in London and then you want to work for a company in London, it's going to be easier for you to jump in there as well. So we are building exactly, some sort yeah. of uh, network, which is going to be great. Now, what are your, what are your plans for the future right now? What, where do you see yourself in the next couple of years, let's say? Well, I see myself learning a lot after having learned a lot, uh, getting more re remote jobs mm -hmm. that pay me more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, not because I'm, I'm an ambitious kind of guy, but I don't want to be worried about money the way I was last year, for instance. I don't sure. want to have, have it in my mind. You know? Sure. A lot of people that join my consultation call, they say, oh, I'd never care about money. The first thing I say, okay, send me all your money on PayPal. And then <laughs> I say, if like, 
I understand that you want to be humble and everything, but money solves a bunch of money problems, you know? Exactly. And then, yeah, yeah. then yeah. those yeah, things, yeah. if you don't solve those things, they will affect your relationships, they will affect your yeah, yeah. health. But Absolutely. They, they, mm -hmm. they are stuck in this bubble, you know, and uh, I, I don't like it, you know? I, mm -hmm. my, my intention is to make people as rich as possible with this skill. And I hope you're not gonna stop at being a developer and I hope you learn other skills. Maybe you'll find a way to start a business or something like I am doing right now. Who knows, you know, like don't stop at being a developer. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like another, another like, thing I was, I was, I learned with watching your videos and what, what you say is that it's actually smart to have several sources of income. Now being a developer gives you an important like sum, mm -hmm. but I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want it to be my only source either. So I'll be exploring that, I think. Sure. Maybe not in the tech business, who knows, but we'll see. <laughs> sure. There is always good to spin like multiple plates, you know, because um, I have my job. I'm still working as a developer. Uh, I don't know how many of these influencers are still doing that. But anyway, just me being a <laughs> hater, I'm still doing that. I have the business, which whatever I make goes back in it somewhere or another. Then I have like investments in crypto and stuff like that, and I'm growing there. So if something gets f***ed up, sorry, I should have not said that. You have to beep me out. Got it, got it, got it. Got it. <laughs> I have other things going on, so I'm never stressed. That's why I always say, it was funny today in Slack, we were saying, uh, who said that? Uh, Robbie said, uh, Christian is never stressed out. I'm never stressed out. I'm pissed off <laughs> and excited. These are my two emotional states, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, do you feel like the investment you've made in my program was worth it? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm really happy to have <laughs> made that decision. I remember when I was doing the first payment, that day your camera wasn't working. Yeah, I had the problem. <laughs> so I was basically give, I was basically giving my credit card number <laughs> to a blank page yeah. on the internet. Like the first thing they tell you not to do, I was like, oh my god, what am I doing? But it was totally worth it. Like, yeah, I would do it again. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I know it. It can be dodgy, and uh, you have to be <laughs> careful who you are talking with, I guess. But my intention is, like, I always see, like, hey, I have to make everything win-win, you know, as much as possible, you know. And then you're gonna get good results. I'm gonna get good results, you know, and so on and so forth. It's a, you see it as a long-term game, and. It's great, and I see my stuff as long term, and I want um, this to grow as much as possible. Uh, I guess that's it. Do you have any other ending thoughts? If you no, just that I don't regret it, and I'm happy now. I'm happy with where I am, where I got here. Sweet, awesome. So, okay. If you want similar results as Tony, uh, what you have to do is you have to apply for a free consultation call. There is a link somewhere here in the description of this video. Choose a time and a date, and then you're gonna talk either with me or someone from my team, and we'll show you how to get similar results as Tony, very fast and in an efficient way without having to uh, be stressed about uh, learning code and everything else. So until next time, Christian. <laughs>